What's going on YouTube? It's the Granny Geek and today I got Chris Grant Jr. here with me as we discuss whether or not it's worth upgrading from the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is what you have and a lot of people coming off their two-year contracts have, yeah. um, to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons. We're going to break it down into categories. But before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button, click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. He's Chris Grant Jr. Hi, Chris. It's the Granny Geek Show. All right, so first of all, Chris, thank you for joining. No problem. No problem. So we're going to break this video down into a couple of categories. Number okay. one, it's going to be uh, how your iPhone 11 Pro Max is performing, performance and battery off the top, because okay. that's one of the main issues that people have when upgrading. Right. Then we're going to talk about aesthetics, which we're going to get out of the way early on because it's not that important. Aesthetics is kind of, you Subje know, it's subjective. subjective. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be based on your opinion. Right. Uh, and then thirdly, we're going to talk about the uh, upgrades that the iPhone 13 Pro Max actually offers over the 11 Pro Max. Okay. And then fourth and finally, we're going to wrap it up with price and upgradability and, you know, what's coming down the pipeline and whether that's worth waiting for or not. Sweet. Sound so, good? Sounds good. All right. So let's kick it off with how is your 11 Pro Max been performing? So a lot of people are coming off their two-year uh, contract. Yeah. They've maybe waited a week for the iPhone 13 Pro Max just to see if there are any kind of gates like Ben Gate or stuff like uh, that. Yeah. And maybe this yeah, week they're looking point. to pull a trigger yeah. on an iPhone 13. So how has your 11 Pro Max been performing for you lately? Well, you know, it's such an interesting story. It's a beast in most things, but lately it's not performing well. Huh. Yeah, it's like it's ramped down mm. performance just as the iPhone 13 was coming out. Uh, but typically, it's running everything perfect, almost like the day I got it. So. Yeah, and that's going to be one of the keys. And today, we're going to, you know, I'm going to be arguing that you don't upgrade. And Chris, to my understanding, because, you know, you want to upgrade, yeah, you'll be course. arguing for upgrading to the iPhone 13. Yeah. But that's going to be one of the big uh, arguments I'm going to make is for what most people need. Mm. You don't need the iPhone. And actually, can we establish that like right off the gate? If you have the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro Max, unless there's something wrong with it, nobody needs the iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's the fair. iPhone 11 Pro Max is a robust and fully capable, yeah, smartphone. That's fair. Yeah. that you can do anything on you can do anything on you can shoot 4k you can you know play your favorite games yeah. without even lag like these these devices are incredible yeah, even fair. two years back yeah, yeah so no, I yeah totally agree. i agree i think you know it's something where you kind of have to decide what you actually use for sure for. for sure yeah so uh so i'm glad that it's performing so well i think that you know as your phone gets older unfortunately battery technology doesn't allow uh, for batteries to maintain their same kind of capacity over long periods of time. So right. as your phone battery gets older, it's going to decrease uh, its battery performance and the total capacity it can charge up to. Yeah. And so what Apple has traditionally done is it's ramped down performance right. in order to save battery life. So that's when people after two, three years, they start to notice differences in how their phone was acting when it first came out. And yeah. this may be a problem that the industry kind of doesn't want to fix because it does drive a lot of upgrades. People say, oh, my phone's slow now or point. my battery life sucks. It's, it's horrible and I can't get through a day. Yeah. Um, so if you eliminate, you know, and they're making improvements to battery life, but overall, if you eliminate battery issues and therefore performance, like the chip can just run at top speeds uh, mm -hmm. indefinitely as long as you can keep charging it up and stuff, I yeah. think that's going to incentivize a lot of people to keep what they have. Good point. Yeah. Uh, but from there, let's talk about something lighter and not that important, which is yeah. aesthetic. So what do you think about the iPhone 11 Pro Max design and then the iPhone 12 uh, and 13? Yeah. Well, honestly, I think the iPhone 13 is better. It's a better design yep. personally because it, it is more reminiscent of the MacBook Pro and the 2018 iPad Pro design. It's just the way that it's going right now. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, Apple has flip-flopped their designs from the original iPhone to the iPhone 4 to the back to the iPhone 6. So, uh, but I like the 12 and 13. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 12, I, I gotta say, I gotta be honest. It's so funny because we're like two totally different people. And, um, you know, we have that same kind of opinion on the design of the iPhone. Super I weird. actually uh, agree and think that the iPhone 
12 and 13 has the superior design over the 11 even though i love the stainless steel let me tell you stainless steel it wears so well it wears like a nice watch it's gonna get scratches and stuff but it was nothing like the aluminum where every little scratch like yeah. nicked away the color yeah, or it looked ugly, ugly. Uh, yeah it, it was a it was a bad situation but yeah you're totally right apple has flip-flopped on the design of iphones back and forth every few years the original iphone through the 3gs was the rounded design yeah. um and then the four through the 5s was you know the squared off the design and they yes. stopped that with the six through the the 10 uh the 10s and stuff like that and sure. now we're back to squared off designs as we saw in the four through the 5s yeah uh so what what does that mean it means and we'll get to this when we get to the upgradability and price section of this discussion. Okay. But it means that, uh, you know, in a few years, we're probably looking at a redesign that's gonna be more rounded off. So yeah. your iPhone's definitely out of the trending right now, but right. in one, two, three, maybe years, um, they might be doing rounded corners again. And plus, and aesthetically, any triple lens camera iPhone, mm. uh, especially when you start throwing cases on it, yeah. people aren't gonna know right off the bat which phone you have, whether it's the 10s Max or the 13 that's, Pro Max, depending true. on the case you have on it. That's a good point. Um, it's really only the edges that people can really start to see the difference. Yeah. And then obviously when they, you know, the screen size has gone up from a 6.5 to a 6.7, yeah. So it's a bigger phone for sure. Yeah, that, um, no, I agree. But that's aesthetics and I think we both agree that that's subjective. Um, so I can't really argue that you shouldn't uh, upgrade yeah, based on that. But let's preference. get into some of the real stuff that I think I can argue are not reasons for upgrading to the iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max. Here we go. So let's actually talk about the iPhone's upgrades and what it offers someone like yourself. So I know you're not the typical user. No. Uh, you do some video stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, do, I dabble here and there. You know, I do some uh, video content creation, YouTube and stuff like that. So I love being able to have a camera that looks good that's in my pocket that I can take out yeah. and record at a moment's notice and uh, just be able to make good content. So when you have the iPhone 13 adding ProRes, adding, you know, Dolby Vision, which the 11 Pro Max doesn't have, uh, I really think that it's perfect for me, especially anybody who's using iPhone as their primary camera for content creation. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a good point. I think, you know, like you're a very specific user and you love video content creation. Yeah. Having a tool like that is really good. And I understand, you know, every time that Apple upgrades their video, they kind of push closer and closer to that mirrorless category. And so, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who wants to up update their production value on their um, iPhone shots, basically shots that are, you know, with a small camera, you can fit it into places and do different things with it that you yeah, can't that yeah. with traditional cameras. Yeah. Uh, I do get that. And, and I would say that for somebody who's using the iPhone solely as their video camera, their, their only video camera for content creation, uh, I would say that it's a worthy upgrade, mm -hmm. but literally that is it. My people, if you, Chris, <laughs> anything else mm -hmm. that you're going to do mm -hmm. On the iPhone, it's it's not gonna be, you're not gonna notice much of a difference, and this isn't um, this isn't necessarily due to performance of the A15. It, it a lot of it has to do with iOS, right? So okay. iOS, um, and we've talked about this even with the iPad Pro right. M1 uh, for a while, even before the M1. The, the, the devices are getting too powerful for the platform, for the entire OS. Like people are not making apps. The uh, industry and third party uh, software manufacturers, makers yeah. are not pushing the performance of the device and what it can actually do. So yeah. um, I point. think that's kind of the bottleneck that we're hitting. Yeah. The 11 Pro Max, man, is going to run through games. Of course, there'll maybe be slightly you know, three, four or five second uh, differences in load times a for a time. game. If you have the time to sit down and play a game, five seconds is not going to mean anything to you. Yeah, sure. uh, well, That's at the true. same time, uh, if you're doing video creation and stuff like that, more processor heavy, um, yeah. you'll probably notice different export and render times. But guys, for text messages, email, all that kind of stuff, and you don't even primarily shoot on iPhone. No. So no. is that really a reason to upgrade that, you know, for a quick 10, 20 second clip, you may shoot on an iPhone? Uh, you're gonna uh, want to get, you know, a few seconds better pretty, render times, production. maybe a minute better render times max with longer projects and stuff. Yeah. I don't think that's worth it, especially when the iPhone mm. 11 Pro Max and, and newer are going to run, you know, all of these softwares, <laughs> everything on uh, on the App Store, uh, so yeah. the App Store, the App Store <laughs> right. with near flawless performance. Yeah, no, you know, you make a good point there. I think it's just always wanting to up the production. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, I, I just think that 
unless those those seconds really translate into dollars for you yeah um, mm -hmm. If it's time that you would be spending anyway, like if you got the phone rendering something out while you're doing something else on the computer or the iPad, yeah. um, it, those seconds don't actually matter. So, yeah, performance-wise, I, I would say you, you don't need to upgrade for, for performance. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yes! <laughs> All right, so now here's a category where I also think I'm probably going to win, uh, and that is upgradability. So thanks to John Prosser, we know yeah. an incredible amount about the new iPhone 14. The 14. Uh, it's apparently going to get titanium, which I think is cool. I don't think they're going to go to rounded corners in this next generation. No. I think they're going to keep the flat edge design, no. but at the same time, I think they're going to upgrade the materials to titanium. I like the look of stainless steel, but titanium's nice. But that's yeah. all aesthetic. Let's talk about mm -hmm. the hole punch camera. Okay, uh, could we be getting, you know, the A16 in here that's yeah. going to be even more powerful? Right. Once again, kind of irrelevant, but who knows what third-party manufacturers would do at this time. The software. The yeah. iPhone 13 Pro Max, right off the bat, is going to cost you $10.99 when you, when you go to buy it outright. Yeah. Uh, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is almost half that. You could probably get it at $650 on the low end, um, mm. you know, and yeah. so you could take that money, save it, buy some accessories maybe or just save it up for the new iphone which is coming in less than a year literally because you know as they say the second the iphone comes out it's outdated right right um so you know in a few months you're gonna want that 14 and unless you got an iphone every year upgrade program yeah you're gonna be paying that same price and obviously iphones hold their value so you could probably really only pay like two three hundred dollars for it because the iphone would just go down the this year's iphone right. would just go down a little bit right but at the same time don't you want as many upgrades when you upgrade an iphone as possible yes yeah no definitely right so if you want that then the 11 pro max to the 14 is going to be a radical jump with new materials because the 11 pro max is stainless steel okay yeah uh, the 11 pro max you know has the oled screen and all that stuff doesn't have 120 hertz which is another upgrade that the iphone 13 offers yeah. but again like a lot of softwares in my testing yeah are not really taking advantage of it yes it looks smooth but i want to see that in video i want to see that in video games and stuff like that mm. um so from the 11 pro max to the 14 you're yeah. getting you know from a what 6.5 to an 11.7 inch screen with a hole punch notch a16 chip 120 oh, hertz refresh yeah. rate even better cameras than the 11 pro max max tech actually did a video uh, comparing the 11 pro max through the 13 pro max cameras yeah. and you'd be surprised it was closer than you would think Wow. I'm, I'm actually, yeah, yeah, so it actually held up really well. Yeah. And so I think if, you, if you're if you the type of person when you upgrade, you want to be blown away by the new tech. Mm -hmm. I think we're I looking did. at kind of a, a tick tock tick uh, to really see uh, significant That's performance, design, uh, improvements and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, that, I mean, you actually make a great point there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so let me know, like, have I convinced you? Do you think? I know the nerd and you probably... Uh, well, you know, I think it's it's like... The iPhone, I do want the biggest upgrade when I upgrade. And I think it's worth the wait. Yeah, I, obviously I agree. I'd, ha I'd have to agree with that too. Um, the iPhone 14 is probably gonna be a beast yeah. and that's gonna be the one worth the, worth the wait for sure yeah. for those on the 11 Pro Max. If you can hold on to it, um, and, and and not get signed to another two year contract and then have to pay it off early and stuff. Yeah, and they're making yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff easier and easier every year. Right. But at the same time, uh, if you want to be blown away by the new upgrade, I would wait for the 14. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be a better phone, obviously. Yeah. So, Chris, obviously, thanks so much for coming on to the show. Anytime. Uh, it's It was awesome talking to you and yeah. meeting you. It was great. <laughs> uh, um, and, and hopefully this discussion was helpful for you guys, the viewers. Uh, if the 13 Pro Max would be worth it uh, versus the 11 Pro Max and stuff like that, let us know with yeah. a comment down below. Also, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. Once again, he's Chris Grant Jr., and it's the Granny Geek Show.